Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Welcome back to all new episode of Black Girl Can't Cook, the podcast on body image healing, cooking, self-love. I'm your host, Brianna Pollins. Good morning. Thank you guys so much. Wait, good morning from WTF Media Studios. I'm so happy to be here. Grateful to be close in proximity. This heat and we're in Midtown. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot, but I'm very excited and I love It's like a good environment, good energy, good judge. The goal is August. August guests will return, but right now I think, you know, when you step away from something, it's really good to get back in habit, in consistency, in discipline, and I'm not going to lie. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, but I fuck with myself, so I can talk for an hour, two hours. Let's yap it up. I do not know where you are, but it is America. It is Sunday, and the president was shot. Donnie... Donnie was shot, and we're not making light of it because everything is energy and death and assault, murder. Like, I take that. Any acts of violence, uh, I feel so grateful that growing up, I feel like the imprinting years of my childhood, of my childhood, of, like, brain development, I didn't really see violence growing up. Praise God. Um, Definitely grew up with black parents, so their generation coming from, you know, we spank, we beat our kids. But they, I believe, like, my dad maybe tried once, and my sadistic ass, I would, like, laugh and smile through it, like, oh, you're going to be, you're going to hit me with the belt. No, no, no. But I didn't, they didn't do that. And then my mom being, like, sober and so AA, and really the OG of gentle parenting of just, like, you feel your feelings, you know, you work through your emotions, being really in touch. She, like, let us express our emotion and... I'm grateful that my parents like never got violent and I never saw violence in the house. The most was growing up with two brothers and trolling and battering and beating up. My little brother says I bullied him. He's a Leo. Who knows? Who knows? But I, when I see violence, you know, I even think of pride. I've been in New York 10 years and my first pride, not the first, but like the third, being with my girlfriend, being downtown in the village. And like, you know, then it's after hours, the parade's over, it's a, everyone's drinking the sun and like you just see fights break out. And then being in a city, even if I'm on the train, when I see violence, I get so scared and I get terrified and I, I want to be like, am I praying for our president? To me, it does feel like it was staged. It's crazy that someone tries to shoot at you and then you come up fist pumping. Y'all, the clip, the clippy clip, multiple fists, multiple fist pumps. And and then the Secret Service docking, dodging. It's a lot. It's a lot. I think America is in trouble. I do believe this is going to help his sympathy vote. People are really going to eat this shit. I was at a party last night. My girlfriend said, oh, like the similar thing happened to Richard Nixon. I did not know that. I thought that man was just in trouble for Watergate. But I guess they tried to kill him too. It looks like it was staged. Donald now has the edge. He has a lot of the black vote and the Latina X community. And this is only going to add on to his pro-America fight on. Look what they did to me. His ego, he's going to spin this in the most atrocious, evil, delicious, just a sick way. So in that case, Democrats, wake the fuck. Wake up. Wake the fuck up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Talking to my mommy this morning, she's like, who would they even put in? How could they do? They'll put in someone. Make it work. Who's the mayor, the governor in Michigan? She's getting shit done. The, the hillbillies tried to kidnap her. They did, but um, there's a black man in, I think, Maryland, he, Democrat, and a black family who, damn, even little boy Pete Buttigieg, P- Pete, the Pete guy, and he's gay. Y'all, not Gavin Newsom. I'm not a Californian, California-based, but Gavin is handsome, and he gives crooked politician and the hair and the veneers, the teeth. Not Gavin. And not Kamala. Not Kamala. America is still so sexist and racist that we're not ready yet for a female president. I hope in my lifetime we will see that, but not right now. My golden ticket would honestly be Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. I think women—and she's a black woman, but I feel like 
It's either or. It's either or. This assassination attempt was so scary, but I feel like America and violence and America is in its Pluto return. It's Pluto return. And 200 years ago when that was happening, it was the American Revolution. So we're in for some change. Um, Looking at my girlfriend's story, Sarah in Arizona, she was so emotional and it's emotional. I can't imagine watching it and seeing someone literally try to assassinate, take out the president. So please protect your energy, protect your space, and register the fuck to vote. I I really might be hitting the pavements. Before I was like, I'm not going to vote this country, but now we have to vote. If I have to vote for good old Grandpa Joe, I will because I want to live in a free American society. Okay, but that's just like what has happened. Good morning. And to that's like, the, it was it was on a Saturday. It happened yesterday, late in the day. So like the new circuit right now is crazy. And we're only going to see things get worse as the election gets closer. How are you guys? How's your weekend going? I want to catch you up on my weekend. Last weekend, last week was so sick because it was a... Was it a three-day, five-day weekend? I know in some European countries, they've modern, they've they've moved to a four-day work week. So Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, Monday through Wednesday. America just loves capitalism so much. They love capitalism so much, and it's a little upsetting. But last weekend was amazing, and it was the 4th of July. It was the 4th of July. I stayed home-based. I went to this dance party. My girlfriend invited me to, like, the Lincoln Center. They have a lot of shows. Not shows. The Lincoln Center. They have, like, events, and, like, it's like a summer cool-down. Listen, the thing about living in a city and living in New York, there's always free events. Free events. Indoors, outdoors, arts, crafts, um, just anything you can think of. So it was like – it was one of those silent dance parties where like you put on the headphones and usually it's like a music and right the headphones – the headphones light up and they're different colors – And so if, like, if they're lighting up and you're on the blue color, oh, then, like, you and someone you're dancing next to, you're listening to the blue radio and you're vibing, you're dancing. That was not that. We all had headphones, and there was a DJ, this DJ from Brooklyn, and I'm so bad for not knowing his name, but black DJ, and it was at Lincoln Center. It was Wednesday, and the crowd, the people, what I really love about living in New York City is the diversity. Like no one here looks the same, especially the body diversity. If you're stuck on Instagram, stuck on TikTok and you're like, oh, everyone looks the same, skinny, thin, this, like you need to expand your vision and also get outside, get the fuck outside. The dance party was sick because there's just people from all different walks of life, young, old, girlfriends, coupled, gay, people in wheelchairs, chairs like to say just the just every and everyone's dancing everyone's vibing the dj put his foot in it and black girl can't cook it's really black girl can't dance like it takes me a second to find a rhythm find a beat but growing up not growing up living in new york for the last 10 years i feel like dancing and like being with my gaze when you dance like energetically you are letting shit go you are physically moving trauma, moving the weak movie. You're just moving and grooving and you're letting it go. And then you're hot, you're sweaty. Y'all, I'm a sweater. I'm a sweater. That's my mommy's jeans. I do kind of love that about myself because when I sweat, that's just my body detoxing, getting rid of toxins and sauna who? I don't need a sauna. We're And I don't sweat at night, thankfully. But I mean, like, if it's hot, I'm going to sweat. And if I'm dancing and if there's a crowd... I'm gonna sweat. Y'all, I was soaked. Follow me on Instagram and on TikTok, Black Black Girl Can't Cook. I posted the reels. And it's just when you are able to let yourself go and just be in a crowd and then be with your girlfriends. I'm so grateful that I have friends in my life who invite me places and like who like me and want to hang out with me because I feel like we all, we all want to It needs to be reciprocal, right? Like you need to be saying to your friends, I miss you. I want to see you. And you both should be making an effort to make that happen. When that happens and when it's cohesive, you really feel loved and you feel like, oh, this is what fucking friendship feels like. This is what female friendship feels like. I feel like we're in this interesting time of still competitiveness, jealousy, bitterness, envy. And I'm like, I know. I know I'm not going to get along with every single girl, woman, 
on this planet. But the ones I do get along with, um, I want to empower them. I want to make friends with them. And I want to, like, love them and us uplift each other. All that. Girls kiss girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's real. The dance was so much fun. And my girlfriend, Kamaya, shout out Kamaya. She was on the HBO Max show. They canceled it. It was the dance ballroom show. Why am I? It's missing me. It's missing me. And La Roche was doing it. I'm going to get the name by the end. But her team, Balenciaga, Juicy Couture. I'm now I'm really butchering it. Shout out Kamaya. She was going to be downtown at the Boom Boom, not the Boom Boom Room. Do they call it the Boom Boom Room? Or is it Le- LeBain? LeBain, the standard hotel. Now it's a classic. It's a classic like in your 20s New York scene. It's like downtown meatpacking. But I, again, I hadn't been there since like pre-COVID and like, you know, that when you're 21 to like 24, like that's when you go. So finish the dance party. I was going to offer, this girl offered to give me a ride and I'm like, you know, and I just met her and she's so sweet, but I like to just do my own thing. And I'm really finding joy in going it alone, going it alone with God, holding my hand, being nervous, being insecure, just like being out in the world alone. I'm kind of loving it. And it's scary. It's anxious, but you do it, you get over it. And then you just have fun with yourself. So I hopped on the bus. The bus, y'all, New York City, the bus is life. The bus has AC. The bus drivers are nice. Um, Same cost. The bus is where it at. It's just, and too, like, they see who's getting on the bus. I mean, not always the express buses. You can, like, have the back door and crazies, weirdos can get in. But overall, the bus is my favorite place for getting around the city and safety. And I caught the bus. Caught the bus. I was, like, at 59th. Caught it to meatpacking. And I went to the standard. Now, being at a club and doing a club by yourself, it is. It's, I was like, okay, we're doing this. You're talking – one, I guess when you go to clubs, you st- there's tickets, right? And there's DJs performing. And usually, like, you're at the door and usually there's, like, a line on one side. Then there's, there's usually, like, a fast track. I learned that in Vegas, too. Always get on the fast track club line because we're not waiting. For who? For who? But these girls were going in ahead of me and they were just scanning. There was, like, a group of boys. And I just, like, kind of just morphed myself in. And by the time I got to the door, like, they weren't even checking just – just go in. Everyone go in. And I got in and I like it. I love La Bain. There's like three levels of the club. My favorite is the roof. Y'all, they redid the roof. It's like glass and there's like cushionies and a good mix of people. I love being out and I love being with black people. I really, really do. I mean, growing up and you guys know my background It's good to feel at home, like in your body, but like in your community. I think that's so important. And every black American's journey is different to that. So it was cool. It was a cute young crowd, a lot of boys. I met this really nice guy. I don't know why I did not exchange contacts. He took the greatest shot of me. He's like, let me take your picture if you want. Because, you know, when they see you struggling and he was just so nice. He was visiting from Seattle. He had parents in Buffalo. They just like celebrated an anniversary. And like I can talk with if the man is cool, not giving creepy vibes, I can so talk and make friends. But then I like, again, I want to do my own thing. I want to be by myself. And two, we were like blocking a table. This group had just paid for this table. So we had to move. That was cool. Y'all, I got there at 11. I'm like, Kamaya's not going to show. I I leave and I'm exiting out the building. Oh, I had two Cosmopolitan. There's like a little white horsey. There's disco balls. And listen, it's like meatpacking Chelsea West Village. After I got my first cocktail, I learned this about myself. I like to be at the front where the DJ is. I don't want any distractions. I want to connect with the music. And so I got to the front and I love the village and I love the gays. Go girl, get it, get it, work it, work it. Eh, eh. They hype you. They give you what you need. And then it was a cool mix, a cool mix. Some of the girls looking at me, but I was just dancing and again, like moving that energy. And from after the last hour and a half at the other dance thing, I was ready. I was ready, but I leave. I start exiting the building. I'm literally exiting. And again, Kamaya's like a public person and she's known. She's a fantastic dancer, um, ballroom, not ballroom. It's ballroom in the sense of like the ballroom in New York City. Watch Pose. Watch the show, TV show Pose, ballroom, 
not drag shows. It's not that, but it's more like elevated, more classy, more performance, high theater. She's a phenomenal, insane dancer. I'm literally leaving and I hear this person. She's like, oh, hi, I'm Kamaya. And I'm like, Kamaya! Because <laughs> I was like, I was literally exiting. I'm like, I can't be here for another hour past my bedtime. But I see her. I go back in the elevator. She, I meet her friend. He was so sweet. Now, y'all, we're an hour and a half in. I would have gotten cocktail number three, but when you know yourself, you know. You know, you know, you know. And two, I need to get myself home. It is just me, and this is precious cargo. <laughs> it's precious. So I was like, let me have one drink, girl. I had one drink, and it was good to see her. It was good to, like, take a picture. Um, again, when you're in contact with your friends, and I, we know that life happens, we know that exiting your 20s going into your 30s everyone has shit going on hell some people are married with babies and mortgages and parents that are dying um it takes time it takes time to really have friend time and to build like everlasting friendships because it's possible and we all need community and being a new yorker going on 10 years i'm really like fuck look at the community i've built. Look at the people in my life who love me. I mean, because it's so easy, right? Like talking last week of like the breakups and friendship breakups. How easy is it for you to sit in your shit of like, no one loves me. Wow. These friendships were so good. Wow. These people, maybe the betrayals, but the laughs, the loves. And now that it's gone, you could really just sit in your shit all day. Or you could be grateful. You could be present and really be like, oh my God, look at Look at all the love I have in my life. And I don't know, when you're going into your 30s, you prioritize the people you want to prioritize. It's really like they say about like dating and men and guys, like, you know, if he likes you, you know, <gasps> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. So Saul Kamaya, y'all, last little tidbit. I was exiting the, and this is God in the universe. Don't play. They don't play, but they're like really fair. I, um, sorry, I'm trying to. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was exiting the club, and it's a lot of people, and people just want to start shit for no reason. And I'm, we're at this time in America where I think people want to be angry and fight for no reason. So now more than ever, you have to protect, like, your emotional space and energy. Nonetheless, the security guard, people were fighting. They were fighting. And I am my mother's daughter, but not when it comes to claustrophobic. But when you're like in a tight elevator and it's 80 people and you're all trying to get down and the security guards and the men are fighting, these men are babies. And yeah, God is fair. The universe is fair. I'm glad I didn't leave when I left. And I'm glad I saw my girlfriend, Kamaya. Fourth of July was great. I went shopping. I took myself on a date. I saw fireworks. I had dinner at Bowery Meat Company, one of my faves, best restaurant. And what was crazy, when I was leaving, I biked down. I love the battery. Like, yeah, the West Village, Washington. I'm come becoming obsessed with the battery, y'all. It's the anniversary of John John. I think of Sonia Morgan. <laughs> If you know, you know, Real Housewives. I think of John John Kennedy and Caroline Bizet, Bizet, New York fashion icon. It's like their anniversary. So all this stuff, the Kennedys, JFK. But it really helped me not to idolize anyone's relationship because like the Daily Mail posted these pictures and they were fighting. They were fighting. I'm going to leave the clippy clip in the show notes. They were fighting at the Battery Park and like it looks like he put his hands on her and there's also a fantastic CBS Sunday morning piece on her. I'll link it too. And she's got a book. She's got like a beautiful like new kitchen coffee table book like on all her fashions and this woman wrote it. But in the interview, like the takeaway and I think being a public person and being famous, it's so sad that like your life's not yours and that women kind of settle and they stay and the daily mail pictures are fucking crazy because like it's a fight and like he's putting his hands on her then he's crying girl these men these men anyway that's why i love it took place at the battery i love the battery so i did fourth of july fireworks at the battery it was literally on the east river not hudson it was on the east river kind of by the statue of liberty but i didn't want to be packed with all the people. Again, even at Pride, the police presence has been really mucky and weird <clears throat> this summer. I don't know what's happening. 
who's getting tipped off. It's just, I don't want to be where the crowd is. Like get too many people, too much, too many ops, too many ops. So I did the battery. It was beautiful. And I was in this like little corner and just to see the fireworks go off, this like nice, sweet, middle-aged white lady was there, this sweet black couple. The man was like carrying his wife, his woman's chair. And then like she sat and like we were all away from the crowd, but just to see like through the trees, the fireworks go off and it was so beautiful. But y'all, I was biking after dinner. I biked down through the seaport and y'all, the niggas were throwing off fireworks on the PJs. And like the projects in like the Lower East Side seaport, they seem so low. So to literally be biking, sweating, so hot, but like the fireworks. And then there's like ambulance, there's fire trucks, New York. New York, the city of dreams, the city of dreams. Sunday, chill day, and I record it. I'm back in the studio. This weekend was great, very low key. I got my hair done. Y'all know that the scalp is skin. The scalp is skin. I didn't know that much about braid health and scalp health. I've been natural since COVID. So going four years, March 2020, and now when I get my hair done, I try to have it in for like at least seven to eight weeks. But in between, I wash my scalp. Like it's so important that you clean your hair and clean your scalp. If you listen to earlier episodes this season, you know I was struggling with traction alopecia. I saw my dermatologist. She was like, babe, it's these hairstyles, the pulling. I worked with my braider and was like, hey, leave, you know, these parts out so it can grow. And I started taking Vegamore. Vegamore works. The hair drop, the oil, they work, they work, they work. And now, I mean, I work out. I ride a city bike. I just don't pull the, the perimeter. I don't pull the perimeter back because, again, that's pulling. The way my dermatologist said it, and to be a black woman, like our hair goes, I don't know, our, our hair is different. Everyone's hair is different. But when braiding it, I'm like bend, I'm like twisting it a bit. And like that causes breakage breakage, breakage. I do want to try Beyonce's hair care line, um, but soon, but soon. It was a chill weekend. Last night, my friends hosted a Meg Fryan potluck party. <laughs> Y'all know Meg Ryan, the white lady. Classic um, rom-com. You've got male, Anastasia, um, Courage Under Fire, um, Top Gun. Doesn't she die? No, her boyfriend dies in Top Gun, the original. Um, what's the other one? The, uh, <gasps> y'all, Sleepless in Seattle. I finally saw, so, 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 my friends, they had a little potluck party. It was so fun. It was in their apartment. What did I bring? Y'all know it is Black Girl Can't Cook. Black Girl. I brought Popeyes. I brought a 10 piece Popeyes and I brought Coleslaw. That was my contribution. Oh my God. My girlfriend's husband made this incredible like fried rice with veggies. Was it ground beef? Ground tur delicious. Um, my other girlfriend made these like quail eggs on a bread, on an avocado. It was, y'all, it was such good food. Um, my other girlfriend made like fried mac and cheese bites. This other couple made like fried zucchini mushroom. The food was so incredible. I was actually there with them last night when we all found out Donnie got shot. Nonetheless, Meg Ryan is an iconic film actress. I did tell my girlfriend, she does not act with black people though. And she's like, well, maybe that's like the industry and not really on per se Meg Ryan. The only man was Dave Chappelle and you got mail. Fascinating, fascinating. It was a great night. Um, do you guys know what Zins are? It's like this little tobacco packet thing and... Shout out Emily, me and my girl. I had a Slurpee, did a little vodka, ate a lot of food. Um, and then we went to 7-Eleven, me and Emily. We packed up these, we got Zins and it's like a peppermint. Y'all, the buzz is instant. When my friends say, I was literally like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like I do not know. what. <laughs> but also it is so hot, you have to, Stay hydrated. I was not hydrated. The hair appointment, the only thing I drank was a guava lemonade. It was a fun night. Um, we started with Anastasia, the iconic Disney. It's a princess movie. Y'all know they really actually murdered Anastasia and her whole family. Like they found her bones in the backyard. And the film is just like a, 
what could have been, what happened. I almost cried when her and her grandma were reunited. Classic, iconic. Then we did, we did Sleepless in Seattle. Y'all know that Sleepless in Seattle is really just a knockoff remake of a, t- an, a, a Okay, in Sleepless in Seattle, they like reference An Affair to Remember. It's like Cary Grant, some other white woman. But Nora Ephron, shout out, she put her foot in it. She literally just remade An Affair to Remember inside Sleepless of Seattle. Tom Hanks, his wife dies. He's got a little boy. They meet the Empire State. It's cute. It's really, really cute. But it's a movie inside a movie of the same movie. You're following me? Okay, I had to leave. I was just so tired, so Faded. I was like, and I came back to life. Thank God they had water. We like one gallon, one cup of water. I got it. And the water brought me, brought me back to life. We finished outside in the backyard with you've got mail and you've got mail is a classic upper West side. I watched halfway and here's to falling in love. I feel like if you're outside, it will happen. I'm saying this for me, (laughs) like if I'm outside, it'll happen. And with the dating apps, we'll get more on that next week. For me, I'm never going to know what a person is like off a screen, like off a screen. And y'all, these men be lying. These men be lying and they're liars. Who are you? Really? Who are you? When I meet a person, I really kind of get everything I need, like all the information, all the vibes, even by like smell, by hug, by just like tone of voice. I really can see like if this person's just like point blank authentic and I can't do that on a dating app. And I love being outside in the summer in New York because you get to meet people in person and immediately you kind of get the the feeling. You get the feeling. Um, and that was the weekend and it's and Sunday today. I record on Sundays after this. I got to do laundry. I got to take my laundry in and then I need to wash my like dresses because my summer dresses, if I don't take them in, then they like get, they shrink because the dryer, but I love, I love my laundry mat. I love Harlem, black owned, black owned. So that's the weekend. I hope you're having a good summer, a good weekend. I wanted to touch on a couple things. What am I watching? I just finished six Schizophrenic Brothers, HBO Max, and Discovery, and listened to older episodes. Some of you know that I have an older brother who is schizophrenic, but he's healthy, alive, and well, as well as he can be. No, we love John. Um, but this show is nuts. This family of 12, y'all, t- 12 kids had six children, the brothers, like diagnosed with schizophrenia. And it's told from one of the youngest sisters, Mary's. It's her point of view. And it is such a beautiful human story of love, of tolerance, of care. Um, And, you know, like everything has a spectrum. Um, My family's so grateful that my brother has never showed any like violent, harmful, emotional, devastating acts and it's more just like um oh he hears voices he talks to himself he'll get like on a loop of like one obsessive thought and think it we're grateful but and, and it's and it took my family 10 years 10 years of my brother in and out of the hospital in and out of jail to really get like a correct medication dosage and he's good but the show is so incredible I highly recommend it and I love that we're living in this time where we can normalize mental illness um I live in Harlem and I love Harlem, but it's hard to see the crackheads. Not that they're doing crack or on drugs, but a lot of it is mental illness. And I hate that this country looks away at it, doesn't talk about it, even postpartum. You know, these bitches have babies and they are depressed and like they barely talk about that. So us opening the door and talking about mental health is important. And, you know, shame leaves the body when you talk about it, when you address it, when you talk about it, like shame evaporates. It totally evaporates. Um, the last couple months, the internet was talking about Summer House. Summer House was so damn good. I am team Lindsay because the editing, the producing, I'm team Lindsay. I think these men snap. And you literally see two instances where Carl snaps in the season. And I guess we get it and he's stressed, but also it's like, 
women that are straight hetero need to be with men who are secure and who have like an emotional intelligence. I get it. We're all human. We get mad, but you cannot be raising your voice at me. You cannot snap at me. Team Lindsay, team, team Lindsay and Lindsay's pregnant and they're literally filming the new season. They got rid of Danielle. Now I was at the store and I did see a lover boy can. I don't know if I can drink lover boy because Kyle does not treat his wife well. So I don't want to support. And I love Amanda. I love Paige. I love Sierra. I love Gabby. I love, but I don't want to support a brand, let alone fucking alcohol. If you like talk shit to your wife. I think he called her a bitch or something crazy. And again, with reality, I'm always like, y'all know your mom is going to see this. Your nan is going to see this. Your kids, this is going to live on forever. So that's disturbing. It's not free Amanda. Um, Marriages take time and now Kyle's in therapy. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. What else am I watching? Um, the Valley, the Valley was, is so good. Y'all the Valley is so, so good. It's Kirsten. It's Jax. It's Brittany. It's her country. The Valley's so good. And to me, this just shows me, I don't want no damn kids. I don't want no marriage. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not, excuse me. Not yet. It is such a huge life transition. And it seems like you want to do that with community, with friends. The Valley is so good because I really understand why all my simple minded Arizona friends stayed at the same place, stayed friends with all the same people, had their babies immediately. And you just like grow up and do the same thing. Then your kid it's and it's generational, like even their parents did it. And like that's how like communities form and stay because like then, then you have property and businesses and like you're like, oh, my family's lived in this town for four generations. And I guess a part of me will get like the swing of, uh, and my girlfriend's like that did it young or had babies in high school. I'm like, well, damn, like they did that. And like, they're fucking lucky. They did it. It's like out of the way. And like now their kids are going to grow. Maybe not jealousy, but maybe like there's a different way to do it. And everyone has a different way. I think it's such a beautiful chapter and the Valley puts such a little window peak insight and marriage. I get why the elders say marriage is work. It is work. And who are you going to work for too, for the rest, not work for who do you want to work with and build and create with for the rest of your life? The rest of your life. I don't believe in poly and the poly community, but I see y'all and I see why you do it. Cause it, one person. It's a lot. It's a lot. I love the Valley. I don't think Brittany and Jax are going to get together. I love that we saw Brittany achieve and gain financial success when she left Vanderpump Rules. And it's crazy how like once women can, once we can support ourselves emotional, financially, creatively, independently, it's not like we don't need a man, but it's like we don't need to be with someone who's going to like be rude and awful and disrespective and abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, physical abusive. It's not like, oh, I can do it on my own, but it's like, I can take care of myself, have a great community and friendships and friends, maybe have a side piece, whatever, and like live my life. Love Brittany, love Brittany. Sheena and Brock, Brock is weird. Brock is so weird, y'all, because he, I don't trust any man that doesn't talk to his former kids. And we're looking at you too, Brad Pitt, your abusive alcoholic ass. I don't trust, y'all, I don't trust men that don't see their kids. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. What else am I watching? I want to talk about Housewives. Do we even have time to talk about Housewives? I think we have time. But the last show I was watching, Gerard Carmichael, he had a reality show. Wait, wait, wait. And so like the background is, People were pissed because HBO canceled all these black shows, rap shit, um, Love Ca- Lovecraft County, country, um, black lady sketch show. They canceled all these, this good like black entertainment and they brought on Gerard Carmichael's reality. And this is the thing about reality TV. I will forever remember being in high school and the Hills, the original Hills, like ending, wrapping up. It was like Kirsten Cavalieri. And at the end, it's like her and Brody Jenner. And they're literally at a film lot in like LA, Paramount, MTV. 
and they like handshake and they drive off. Reality TV is not real. Let's maybe say there's like a 15 percentage of real added what's happening, but it's not real and it's produced and it's and it's scripted in a sense in a bit. So for me, like reality TV is not real, but with Gerard Carmichael's show, the honesty, the rawness, the truth. Gerard is like a comic. He literally is like a New York City comic and he's gay and he came out and he like went through this stuff with his family because his dad had this whole other family when he was in high school and his show, you need, it's mandatory black viewing. And I don't know why people are so uncomfortable to confront their parents, ask their parents like, why did you do this? And why did you love me the way you did? Why did you treat me the way you did? Again, that all comes back to imprinting. Our first caregivers are the first people who take care of us, who nurture us. That literally shapes the rest of our lives. And that's crazy. That's crazy that like habits or feelings are getting tr triggered. The body keeps the score. Memories. It all stems back to how was I loved? How was I nurtured as a child? Um, I loved his show. I loved his show so much. Eight episodes. His mom is very conservative. She does not like that he's gay and she's a very a Christian woman. And that's also a great perspective to see because we see that so much of the gay community still like has has effects of like their parents not loving them for them and like being disgusted. And really to see it like to pray the gay away, it's sick. And it's like fascinating that people's ideology is so like when it really just can't be love is love and we're all human and we're created in God's eyes. Can't be wrong. Can't be wrong. God's eyes, God's image. He came for his daddy. He came for his daddy. Um, rightfully so. I think as a child and speaking for me, it's okay to be mad and upset with your parents. Like you did this fucked up shit and I want to discuss it. I want to dissect it. And now, why not now? Maybe I didn't have the language. Maybe I didn't have the courage when I was fucking 10 or 12 or 16 or five. But now, yeah, ask your parents, ask them, ask them. And two, I love good art. I love good TV when I'm uncomfortable. When I am uncomfortable, and I was uncomfortable when he's on Grindr, he dates primarily white men when he was talking about like slave play and slave rate not slave play but like well there's a play slave play and it's like based on just like the race relations and love and he said something about like smelling like Martin Luther King and his white boyfriend and trying to read that shit made me uncomfortable but being a black American and growing up in an in an like a white supremacist patriarchy, like it's kind of embedded. Shit is really like, it's embedded. So you have to do a lot of therapy and we see his therapy sessions. Oh my God, he's a chronic cheater. He keeps cheating on his boyfriend. It's one of the best reality shows I've ever seen. Um, we have Bo Burnham in a mask giving the best advice because like reality and like even if you're to go back, follow me on YouTube, you can see those vlogs, eating, being with my ex-boyfriend, like, it's real, but it's like produced, it's crafted. And like you're letting people in and like what they're going to say, how they're going to bombard you when you're putting, when you're like cutting out your heart and your wound and you're just like, here, here audience, this is, so I loved it. I loved it. Um, I wasn't disgusted by it. I think it's an incredible series you guys have to watch. I'm not watching Love Island. Um, I wanted to discuss... The Housewives and why I love talking about The Housewives, why I watch The Housewives. And just speaking of, OC just premiered. The OC Orange County is like the GOAT. It's the best. And personally, that's when I started watching Housewives. I grew up in Arizona and all my little white girlfriends, all the, it was really like the suburbs or the country, like in mansions. And the OC gives the vibes of like white moms drinking with their kids and driving BMWs. And those were some of like my best friend's moms. So at 14, 16, my girlfriend was like, do you watch this show? And I was hooked. I was literally hooked. Vicky, Tamara, um, Heather, 
again, reality TV is not real, but there's certain imageries and certain, I feel like being a woman and girlhood and cattiness and groups and like mean girls, women and relations, it should be studied. Like the American humanization of girlhood and it's fascinating now to see grown women with money. It's so good. It's so, so good. Um, let me just like run through. So I love OC. OC like top and the best. And they brought Tamara back. I want them to make Vicky, Vicky a regular, but they won't because like Vicky likes to fight with everyone for no damn reason. We'll get back to oh, – and Shannon. Shannon's my fave. And Emily and Gina. Okay, New York. I did not start watching the New York City Housewives until I moved to New York because I was like in Arizona and I'm like, New York, ugh, the city. And so gross. And buildings. Like what are these women? But now I love New York. The last season was a great restart. I don't know about phenomenal, but I really enjoyed it. I love seasons 7, 8, 9, 10 and early, early Roni. Because Bethany's the goat. Bethany is the fucking goat. The dynamic, her, Carol, the girl with the eating disorder, Jules. Um, then the fallout, Dorinda, Dorinda with John. And then just, oh, uh, why women pick people who we pick? Again, the sociology, the social, it's just fascinating. And it's fascinating to see because these are women with money, with their careers that have like made this chapter of their life. And to be like 21, 19, 29 watching it, it's just it's a fascinating watch, a fascinating watch. I'm currently re-watching season seven. And Luann, another goat. Luann's good. Luann's good. Atlanta. Atlantis. Atlanta. Some would say, and I think because Nene is the most memified, Nene leaks, and I just restarted watching I Dream of Nene when her and Greg get remarried. So good. I honestly think that Nene is the top. It's really Nini, then Bethany, like top three, top five. But, well, only because Nini is memefied. The memes of Nini that I see on The Shade Room, that I see on Tumblr, on Twitter, on t like Nini is just memefied. And she's her one-liners. Her, Nini is the goat. And it's really interesting to watch her journey. I would say she was the first housewife to get success and notoriety in the like public space of like NBC of like the new normal to be like a working actress. Um, and then to see it, to see the downfall and to see like the housewives is also so dark because there's corruption and there's greed and there's money and then there's family and then there's divorce, the housewife husband curse. Nene has a great legacy and they should honestly bring her back. But I, I love, I got into Atlanta later only cause yeah, two growing up, I was not, in touch with my blackness. I just wasn't. I was like, mm -mm. but I loved it. I love Atlanta. Kim, Sheree, S Cynthia, the goat of modeling. Um, they just fired Kenya Moore. And it's disgusting to see a dark skinned black woman with a daughter. It's tough because Kenya was never a girl's girl and Kenya has never liked other women like that. And we're praying for Kenya's healing. And they keep saying, oh, more will be revealed. More will come out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this new housewife was, is a sex worker. Like, why are you tearing? It's just the housewives. Is, it's so dark. It's so it'd be like being in high school and like you put shit panties in a girl's locker because you hate her and then sent her te her sex to everyone. That's the housewives. <laughs> and so it's good to like study and to see. But they got rid of Kenya. Um, I do like Salt Lake. Salt Lake City is nuts. Mary Cosby, the only black one, married her granddaddy. But I love the I love Whitney. I don't care for Meredith. Lisa, Lisa eats fast food. Heather's the goat. Heather came out the last season. Angie K. Listen to old episodes. We talk about it. I did watch The Real Housewives of DC. That was dark. That was dark because it was so public and big because this one white lady had snuck on to like the president's corresponding dinner and they filmed crazy, crazy, crazy. But like her husband was embezzling money. There was a great black couple. I really liked DC. I don't watch Miami. Y'all know how I feel about Miami. And I don't watch Jersey. Y'all know how I feel about Jersey. But I did watch like the last two episodes. Ugh, they look so... They look so, they look so, oh my gosh. Beverly Hills. I love Beverly Hills. And you could say Beverly Hills is a favorite of everyone. 
But I don't like the over the top, like the um, opulence of just money and what. It's like almost too much. Like you're vomiting all the labels, all the stuff. Beverly Hills is cooking. It's cooking. It's cooking. I love old Beverly Hills. Kyle, Kim, Kathy. Lord Jesus, thank you that I did not have sisters. Um, I like Sutton, good old Sutton. Um, Garcelle. Sutton is great because as a woman, she you see her that you see a woman that like did the thing, married, was the housewife, and then like her husband left, but it was like the highest, most expensive divorce like in history. She stepped away. But I love that she's teaching her daughter like you don't need to not rely on a man, but you don't need a man for money. Like have your own shit and your own agency and make your own living. Like a great man, a wealthy man, poor man, he'll come. But don't – and I kind of needed that. I needed to get in the thing of like don't – I don't need a man to take care of me. Do I want it? Would it be nice? Sure. But in the long term – even leaving my last relationship, I knew that like I had to do it for myself and I had to go it on my own. And Sutton's journey is beautiful. And like now that she's wealthy, she has money, she's doing it for herself. I love it. And Garcelle, Garcelle. We love Garcelle, the only black woman on Beverly Hills. Well, ne the next season, they have another black woman coming on. I literally love her. But Garcelle is one where you can see the benefit of being a housewife and how it can literally resurgence your career and like rejudge you and give you more acting deals, more co more sponsors, more commercials. Like if you can use it for good and also Garcelle is not in a relationship and she's unmarried. And so I think that's to her benefit because she's just killing it. She's killing it. She's killing it. And I don't know, being a mother too, these women have mom guilt. These women have mom guilt. And I think of Garcelle because she has boys and her sons really be like, well, you just work and you're gone. Boys, who's going to pay the bills? Who's going to pay for the beach house? Who's going to have the nice things? And now Garcelle just got her son in modeling, the the Yolanda hottie, Gigi Wet. It's good. It's good. I love Garcelle. And Beverly Hills is good. Kyle and Mauricio. Listen to old episodes from this season. So dark. Kyle needs to come out, though. If she is, she needs to come out and tell us what's happening in her life. But also... Being a housewife and being a public figure, Kyle doesn't need to come out. I feel like that's a very personal journey. And if she's gay or if she's dating a woman, she'll express that in her own time frame. And that's okay. I feel like she can hide that for herself. And two, we all know. We all know. And Kathy was throwing some hints at the reunion. So that's that. Potomac. I love the Potomac Housewives. This season was unbearable. And Candace left. I didn't grow up experiencing colorism. My little brother did because he was dark. He was dark skinned, but I was dark skinned too. But, you know, boys, um, again, I was like one of three black girls. So we weren't, it wasn't about colorism. And this, no, no, no. Colorism is real. Watching Potomac is hard and it, it's awful. It's kind of awful to see. We have Giselle, we had we had Robin, <laughs> Candace had Candace, there was Monique, um, Ashley, Karen. To see how privileged and like what really just like what like light skinned people can get away with and like how they project and then how they deflect. It's hard to watch. And I don't know if I'm gonna watch Potomac next season. Candace left, Candace left. But Candace is pregnant, and I think that's important to protect the peace and the health of you and your baby. Candace's relationship with her man was fascinating to see, and I think Chris needs a job. They can't live off of Candace's um, trust fund. Maybe they can, but I think he needs a job. Ashley, Ashley and Mar Michael Darby. I don't know how Ashley hasn't been fired by her husband, her husband husband's actions because he was like assaulting people on the show cameramen Ashley's different um love Karen <gasps> we love Wendy Wendy is just exploring herself there is also this thing with the housewives and we're going to talk about it with OC circling back you know you get on and perception like you want to change your body you want to get the boob job the lift the you the lips and it's sad to see. And it's all, it's like fascinating, but it's also like, wow, no one looks the same. You guys just can't be you. And to that, 
women have autonomy and agency. And it's also like, well, if you hate yourself and if this boob job is going to make you feel better, go do it. But also get to the root of the problem. I think that's what I believe. <sighs> Speaking of body dysmorphia and the housewives, the OC came back and I don't know what is up with everyone getting these D. UIs, DWIs, it's terrifying. It's frightening. I'm someone who drives on the road. Be fucking sober. Be sober. Be sober. Shannon got arrested. I can't believe Archie, her doggy Archie the lab. Archie was in the table, in the table. Archie was in the car. So she lived. She feels guilty. She's still drinking. I don't think that's anyone else's business. I feel like we know what our body needs. And if you know you can drink, you can drink. If you know you can smoke, you can smoke. Um, it gets to the point of like, why do you want to poison your body like that? You know? But again, to each his own. Emily came back. Emily lost a lot of weight. She did Ozempic. She did liposuction. I can't hate Emily because she's just honest about it. She's honest about it. I don't think it's a woman's right to say, like, I had this and this done. But if the perception is, oh, I just, like, slept and I walked five days a week and you're lying about it, that's fucked up. And you're creating a perception of, I just, oh, I'm just skinny. Oh, I didn't take Ozempic. I just... Be honest. Be truthful. You owe that if you're a public figure. If you're a public figure, you do owe that because young girls are committing suicide. They're hurting themselves. They're vomiting. They have low self-worth. That's all because society's... Ooh. Gina is back. Gina and Travis. That's a, It's a good scene to see because as women... Sometimes we've known we've outgrown a relationship and sometimes we need our friend to be like, yes... You have outgrown this relationship. Yes, you need to move on. And Gina was so human, y'all, when she was really breaking down and just being like, she doesn't want to be alone. And now she has these kids. And it can feel so scary, but I'm telling you, alone is not ever alone. You're like with God. You're with your higher power. You're with your angels, your ancestors. Shit, get a dog. Go to the volunteer center. For me, when I was able to put myself in service of others, that's when I was really able to be at peace with like, okay, getting dumped, okay, losing friends, okay, death happening. Like getting in service is helpful and sometimes we outgrow relationships. Tamara, Tamara, seeing her daughter is crazy. We hadn't seen her in like 10 years, but I also love that the dad kept her off. Kids don't belong on reality TV. That's it. That's the note. They don't belong. They don't belong. Oh, my God, we have that girl, Jen. Jen did not pay her rent. She's behind on bills. And we're going to see her fiancé, that Ryan man. He's, again, these men lie. And they're con artists. And if it could happen to some rich white woman in OC, it could happen to all of us. Crazy, 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 crazy. I can't wait to see that go down. Um, who else? Who else? Heather. Now, people hate Heather Debro, but I personally like her because it's who she is and it's her brand. She's a New York City girl, but it gives the nuclear family with money and that also like each other and that like to have sex. They've had a lot of kids. And to that, a lot of the rich people, which I find interesting, they love design and art and architecture and building. And I think you make a profit, a profit. Money is in real estate. I love Heather because to me, it's a bit of a taste of my American dream, like being in love, having a husband I love, building a family, and then like us doing a creative project we just love. We love building houses, mansions, tearing them down, then selling them. I love Heather. Her party looked fun. That's how you do a party. I love the stations. A voodoo card reader, ne necklace bracelets, mimosa, a wish wishing card. And he Heather's a New Yorker. Heather puts it down. She really, really does. Um, there's a new girl. We have our first Asian, AIPP. I said that right, I think. American, Asian, Pacific Westerner. Okay, don't don't come for me. She's great, and I love that she checked Heather because these women will be like, oh, I've met you, but I didn't meet you. But, like, she checked Heather right away, and it's about time we had an Asian-Korean housewife, housewife. So that's the housewife catch-up. I'm going to discuss the housewives every week, and I love talking about them. I love talking about them because it's really, like, 
You know how the men have their sports and football, NFL and hockey. But women have the housewives and we have Bravo. We have the housewives and we have Bravo. And I think that's a beautiful thing. One last thing I wanted to touch on was thank yous and being considerate. I feel like right now the world, people, the economy, the most you can do, it's like everyone's like kindness, this, but say thank you. Say thank you. Be gracious. I really feel blessed to be in this point of my life where I'm considered, right? Like people consider me. Consideration might be the highest form of flattery, like considering you not in anything and everything people do, but in just like, oh, like I think, I think like my friend would like this. Oh, I think I want like I want to reach out to my friend and oh, I think I want to call my mom or give my friend a re- like just when people, your bosses, strangers, con- when people can just consider you, it feels so good and it's so beautiful and it doesn't and it makes you feel like um it makes your it makes me feel just full, full of life and able to give it to others because when I when I'm considered, I considered others. Also, when I consider myself, what's my mood? Do I want to do this? Oh my god, my friend, she just got this new job. Let me send her a gift card to Sephora. Oh my goodness, let me call my girlfriend. I know her husband's away and she's stressed, she's worried, just welcome a new baby. When you can consider others, it just helps raise the vibration and keeps it high. And thank yous. I I did the service. I was in the service industry. I was almost at Starbucks for like 8 years. Thank you cannot be – thank you. Thank you, thank you. And to the universe, and when I like it, thank you more, please. Just saying thank you. Um, that was this week, you guys. Thank you for being here. If you're watching on YouTube, hi, hello. Um, I'll see you next week. Remember to say thank you to your body. Remember to drink your water. I just – I wanted to reach all, but I – I'm going to chug this water. I hope you have a good weekend. Follow me on Instagram at Black Girl Can't Cook and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week. Okay.